Hi there, this is Marty from OwingsArt.com and today I thought we'd take a look at this Windsor & Newton 100% cotton watercolor sketchbook. Now if you've been in the market, tried to find a 100% cotton sketchbook out there, you've probably had difficulties as I have. Not a lot of companies are out there producing a 100% cotton sketchbook, which is the preferred medium for watercolor artists. Now this particular book made by Windsor & Newton has paper in it produced in a mill in France and then sent to Germany for assembly. So it's bound and put together in Germany and then distributed from there. What I'll do today is I'll use watercolor on this particular sketchbook because it is a watercolor sketchbook. I'll do a few sketches and I'll talk about the pros and cons and even do a little comparison for you on this paper. And then I'll give you a full rating on my experiences with this particular paper and hopefully that will help you as you search for a 100% cotton sketchbook. Now I know there's some boutique sketchbooks out there. The Perfect Sketchbook, which was I think uh, Steve Mitchell talks about this on his channel, The Mind of Watercolor, but that was a Kickstarter uh, you know, endeavor. A guy put together a 100% uh, cotton sketchbook that he you know, assembled and bound himself and it was quite costly. This particular sketchbook right here in my hand has 15 sheets in it and can cost anywhere, you can find it anywhere from 10 to $20 US. So it's not uh, overly expensive, but depending on where you shop, it could cost you a little bit more and where you are geographically. Now what I found in using this paper is you can lift very, very well on this paper. It behaves as well as any high quality watercolor sheet would that you could pick up in say an art store or online. Now as far as layering and glazing techniques and things like that, I think the paper held up just fine in that regard. Mixed colors, wet on wet technique, things like that. The paper is very durable. It feels heavy for 140 pound and I like the texture in this paper. It's not bristol smooth or anything like that and you do get a little bit of texture which i think a watercolorist really enjoys you know being able to feel and see that texture in their work so in that regard i thought the the paper did well um here i'm just using some markers these are watercolor markers made by marabou i was just uh have reviewed these recently over on my patreon channel but i wanted to try them out uh, on this particular paper, see if there was any bleed through, uh, how the paper performed, and it did quite well. Here's some other paintings I did on this paper uh, in, inside this little sketchbook. And by the way, it's a five by seven sketchbook, so it's not big, easy, you can hold it in one hand and carry it with you just about anywhere. I encourage you to go over to Windsor & Newton's website where you can find this and some other different types of sketchbooks and obviously there's some pads here as well that are made of the same paper that's contained in this little 5x7 sketchbook. Right here you, you check out the sketchbook. If you go to details and you scroll down here you'll see that the material on paper inside it says it's 100% cotton. Don't be fooled by other sketchbooks that uh, look really nice, feel really nice, but they aren't 100% cotton. Even Windsor & Newton markets a uh, line of these classic watercolor papers. These are pads, you can get a larger size pad. And if you go here and you look at the details on this classic watercolor spiral bound uh, sketch pad, you'll look here and it says cellulose wood pulp. Most Every sketchbook that's produced today is wood cellulose uh, paper inside. And that's because predominantly watercolor art or sketchbook artists weren't really concerned about the longevity of their work necessarily. Here's a Arches brand sketchbook, which I picked up online, had a hard time finding this, but scored this book on eBay. It's got 140 pound paper as well, but it doesn't quite feel as heavy to me. It's still excellent paper though. But yeah, if you go and you're on the lookout for this, I mean, maybe a sketch artist really doesn't care about, you know, the longevity in their books, but maybe you do and you want something a little bit better. Now, here's some details on this particular uh, sketchbook. As I mentioned earlier, it's 100% cotton, it's great paper. The texture is excellent. It's gonna be very durable. It's got a nice, sturdy, hard back. And like I say, this sketchbook in particular is very affordable from 10 to $20 US, depending on where you shop or if it's on sale. Well, here's my rating. The paper in this book 
is very fine. Some of the best paper in a sketchbook I've ever used. Great texture, watercolor works well on it. So does ink, pencil, mixed media, and really, like I mentioned earlier, really a good value. Overall rating, 8.5 for this excellent little 100% cotton sketchbook by Windsor & Newton. Very high quality, very, very nice. Now I mentioned you could get this on sale sometimes for as low as $10. Shop around online and see what you can find. Hey, as I mentioned before, this paper is made in a mill in France and then sent to Germany for assembly. And if you care about it, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales endorses it. Well, today is a very special featured artist segment because we're going to take a look at this guy right here. This is my very good friend, Larry Ehrlich. We've known each other since high school. We hang out at least once a week to go sketching and sometimes we travel far and wide to go uh, find interesting subject matter to sketch. Here he is sketching on a Saturday and um, there's the two of us. We get together, like I said, almost every Saturday to go sketching. And sometimes we've even uh, joined forces and done art shows together. If you go over to Larry's website, ehrlichart.com, you're gonna find a lot of his work there and be able to take a good look at it. This is an example of Larry's ability to kind of experiment with different things. We ran into this artist named Carolyn Ekman and she was doing silver point. So Larry said, you know, what? I'm going to try that out. So he bought an actual silver point pen and some special paper and did that drawing, which is really cool, I think. But if you look at Larry's work in its totality, what you'll see is work from the humorous to the fantastic to the whimsical and, and just serious stuff as well. Landscapes, portraits. There really isn't a subject matter Larry's uh, afraid to take on. He'll, he'll do anything, and that's kind of what I like about his work on top of it being extremely and exceptionally original. I think when you look at Larry's work, what stands out to me is really the originality and the fact that he does all these drawings dot by dot. So Larry is a pointillist. So everything you're looking at, everything you see here making use of sort of the light and dark contrast and the tonal values is almost exclusively done with tiny dots. This is one of the favorite pieces that, uh, that I love that Larry's ever done. It's just so wonderful. And I think we've all walked on a railroad track from time to time and just he captures moments like that. And here's another great example of the contrasting work and just adding that little tiny bit of color in there is just extraordinary. I, I admire Larry's work. I love it. And I've loved being a part of watching him create this work over many, many years together. Now he travels a lot for his work. So he's able to go places and he almost always wants to go there and find a place to sketch or draw, immerse himself in the culture and then have that reflected in his work. Recently he put together a book. Um, this this book right here, which you can order through Blurb, and I think you can just Google it, but it's called In the Middle of Somewhere. And it just features a really good cross section of Larry's work and highlights his extraordinary abilities. I mean, some of his work is like photorealistic, but it's done with these tiny dots and it's just amazing. And look at how Larry makes use of the horizontal and vertical spaces in his work. I mean, just kind of the snapshot here, Mickey's Diner, which is kind of an iconic place in our hometown. But this street scene there in, in the in the vertical and these horizontal street scenes, I think those those are just extraordinary. And then everyday sort of countryside scenes, or maybe it's a tree or a water tower, or yet right here, they call this the witch's hat, or from a comic book. At the end of the day, I feel pretty blessed to be able to hang out with Larry and share the artistic journey. He's got a great perspective on life and an awesome sense of humor. We always find ourselves laughing and, and just having a good time, uh, you know, talking about art or whatever the subject matter may be. He's all over there on social media, so you can find him on uh, Facebook, I think Twitter, maybe even Instagram, Snapchat. But uh, look him up on Facebook. Go ahead and like his page and uh, check out some of Larry's work. If you get a chance, he's got that book and it's really filled with um, a great cross section of his work which will really familiarize you uh, with what he does. And I think you'll just enjoy it and have a good time looking at it. I know I do and all of our friends that hang out together with us, I think they admire 
not only Larry's uh, great sense of humor and his great thoughtfulness, but his extraordinary originality. Well, I hope you'll share, subscribe, and go ahead and drop some love on the channel. Leave me a comment. I love hearing from you. This has been Marty for OwingsArt.com. So long for now.